Hello and welcome to the Irish Estate. Previously, I was talking about Glyde Court, a house in County Louth that dates from the 18th century and was originally known as Rosie Park. The land on which Rosie Park stood was part of an estate owned by the Foster family, one of whom, John Thomas Foster, an MP in the Irish Parliament, had been married to Lady Elizabeth Harvey, a daughter of the famous Frederick Harvey, Bishop of Derry and Earl of Bristol. In the 1860s, the house had been transformed into a Tudor Beetham mansion, but it's still possible to discern the building's classical bones beneath surface ornamentation. One of the more distinctive features was the porticoed entrance, with the Foster coat of arms shown on north-facing gable-ended chimney breasts. Here, in the early part of the last century, lived the fourth baronet, Sir Augustus Vere Foster, and his wife Charlotte, daughter of an English clergyman. Sir Augustus, who'd been a captain in the Norfolk Yeomanry, was very much the archetypal country gentleman, much given over to pursuits like shooting and fishing, while his wife was an altogether more delicate creature. Around 1904, the Fosters had met art dealer and collector Hugh Lane, who had begun to explore Ireland and to discover what treasures its country houses might hold. Three years later, Lane persuaded the couple that they ought to have their portrait painted, to add to the collection of such pictures already hanging on the walls of Glyde Court. The artist he proposed be given this commission was a great friend of his as well as being a distant cousin, William Orpen, who at the time was still relatively unknown and keen to get well-paid jobs. It was decided that the picture should be painted at Glyde Court, so Orpen spent several weeks there living with the Fosters and sending detailed accounts of the experience back to his wife Grace. We're very fortunate that Orpen was incapable of writing a letter without illustrating it. When not at work on the canvas, the painter would often accompany his host out shooting, as can be seen here. Orpen was not a very tall man, and he often exaggerated the difference in height between himself and other people. Nonetheless, the picture is substantial. It measures six and a half by six and a half feet, as can be seen in another of his drawings, which shows the artist having to use a stepladder to reach the top of the picture. The same drawing also features two of the subjects of the portrait, the Foster's elder daughter Philippa and one of Sir Augustus's donkeys. This particular donkey often had to be brought into the drawing room because the weather was unfavourable at the time and it was raining a great deal. Here is the finished work, which, as you can see, shows the master of the house just returned from one of his shooting expeditions with dead game slung over the back of the aforementioned donkey and another one being clutched by Philippa. Meanwhile, Lady Foster looks as though dressed for nothing more demanding than a gentle stroll. She was pregnant at the time and spent a great deal of each day in bed. Her younger daughter, Dorothy, is similarly clad for only the mildest exertion. Orpen appears to have better enjoyed the company of the two girls than he did that of their parents. He particularly liked the elder one, Philippa, who usually insisted on male attire. As the artist told his wife, she likes to be a boy and makes a good one. As an adult, Philippa chose to be called John and lived with one of her female cousins. Unfortunately, despite his very best efforts, Orpen's picture was not judged a great success, especially in the eyes of the Fosters. So Augusta complained to Hugh Lane that the donkey and the rest of the family all shared exactly the same expression. As if this weren't bad enough, the Fosters at the time were low on funds. So in order to pay for the Orpen portrait, they had sold Hugh Lane one of their old pictures and he'd produced a copy of it for them that no one need know what had happened. Lady Foster wrote that she always squirmed when anybody admired the picture in the drawing room because she now knew it was a fake. And what was the picture that they'd sold to Hugh Lane? Well, it was this one, 
a portrait by Sir Thomas Lawrence of Sir Augustus's great-great-grandmother, the famous Lady Elizabeth Harvey, with whom I started this series. The Fosters lost a picture they loved to gain one they disliked, and today both are in the same collection, that of the National Gallery of Ireland. So let's end things here with the portrait of Lady Elizabeth Harvey, not least because the story of the ruin of Glyde Court in the last century is a sad one, and we don't need any more sad stories just at the moment. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Aesthete. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. And in the meantime, stay safe, everyone. Goodbye.